the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, William Samoy Ruto, is a worried man. The deputy president is worried because his boss, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, is telling him indirectly that he's not going to support him in 2022. And the deputy president is also worried because from the look of things, the president is out to destroy him. Because in, the, in less than 72 hours, the president has done serious things to his deputy, William Samai Ruto. Number one, President Uru Kenyatta locked out his deputy from his official residence in Mombasa. And for those who've been following that incident, the deputy president was in Botswana on 23rd, went to Botswana on 23rd, and he came back early this year. Between that time up to today, the deputy president has not met with his boss. So he heard that the boss was in Mombasa. Yeye pia akajipeleka Mombasa. But the president did not meet him. Instead, the president ordered his staffs to remove his properties from the official residence. And the DP on that day was prepared to spend for the first time at that residence. So that's the first signal the president sent to his deputy. Number two, which happened yesterday, President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta finally sacked one of the key allies of the deputy president from cabinet, Mwangi Kiunjuri. Mwangi Kiunjuri remains and was one of the few allies of the deputy president remaining in the cabinet. Because the president had earlier on kicked out Rashid Mohammed. So the firing of Mwangi Kiunjuri from the cabinet is also significant. And that happened yesterday. And number three, which also happened yesterday, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta kicked out the allies of the deputy president, William Samai Ruto, from attending presidential function in Nakuru County. The president kicked out the host member of parliament, Honorable David Gikaria, from attending his event. He also kicked out Susan Kihika, the senator, the host senator, from attending his function. And from those three incidences, it is clear that the president is out to finish his deputy. But, but just like I keep on saying on this platform, in politics, nothing just happened out of mere coincidence. Everything in politics is normally planned and well executed according to a script. And something tells me that the president, after kicking out Mwangi Kiunjuri, is now setting up a contest or a fight between himself and the deputy president, William Samai Ruto, in parliament. Because there's always this notion that there's always this notion that the deputy president enjoys the support of members of parliament. So the president is not taking the war to him because the two nominees, Betty Maina and Betty Maina and Mutai Kagwe must be vetted in parliament. So that contest is going to narrow down there. What I still don't know is whether the deputy president, William Samoy Ruto, is going to swallow that bait to oppose the nominees on the floor of the house. But from where I am, the president is well aware that his deputy has a lot of influence in parliament. And just like most of us 
also believe so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm close to, to, to the president Fred, as well. Yes. William Ruto is a smart politician. Look at how he used the Tanga Tanga phrase for his own benefit. Mm -hmm. He's very smart. And uh, I remember that time we were, we were in Embo for the burial of the speaker's mother. And he told the people, mine is Kutanga Tanga Kufanya Kazi, what the president has directed me to do. This is a smart politician with networks. You call William Ruto, he'll pick your phone. One time I just tried. I called him and he picked my phone. Mm -hmm. So that personal touch that he has with the parliamentarians and why they called off this PG, because in the entire PG, both Senate and National Assembly, William Ruto has the majority. And maybe State House didn't want an embarrassment where the PG comes out with a resolution mm -hmm. that we are all of us going to, to rally behind William Samoy Ruto. Let me tell you how Ruto is smart. When you look at the parliamentary leadership, Murkomen, when you look at the leadership in, uh, in, uh, in the Senate, Murkomen is aligned to the deputy president. Susan Kihika to the deputy president. My brother here got this position <laughs> courtesy of the deputy president. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you can see the entire leadership. Come to the National Assembly, starting from uh, Duale. They are aligned to the faction of the deputy president. So when it comes to parliament, William Ruto has numbers. Mm -hmm. The David Murathis, they are outsiders. Mm -hmm. There's no much they can do when it comes to the flow of the house. So when it comes to the PG, the person who calls shots, the deputy president has been moving everywhere. Even we are told, when an, he's generous, we are told when an MP has, he has no fuel to go to Moranga, he rushed there and maybe <laughs> he'd be... Last time he mentioned that he got five roads in his constituency, cutters of the deputy president. While Chris Omala tried all over to get in Kimini, I never got anything. <laughs> so you can see William Ruto has used the powers he has in executive okay. to endear himself to the people. Do you think the deputy president is going or will be willing to swallow that bait to oppose the nominees? On the floor of the house. Let's talk real politics. In 2017, the deputy president did something which in my view was one of the most, I, I don't know how I can describe it, but I think it was one of the best strategies ever. The deputy president in 2017 managed to control Jubilee Party nominations. And he ensured that in central Kenya, members of parliament who are appearing to be independent did not make it through Jubilee nominations. And as a result, he ensured that majority of members of parliament from central Kenya are his supporters. He did that also to western Kenya where that 54 plus, 54 percent generated certain members of parliament. The deputy president was doing that because he knew that these members of parliament were going to be instrumental for him and in his 2022 presidential bid between 2017 and 2022. And as a matter of fact, the deputy president currently controls most of those members of parliament. And he did something else also. In parliament, the deputy president ensured that the majority leader at the National Assembly was his person, Adendwale. He also ensured that the whip of the National Assembly, Ben Washiali, was his person. I don't know where the president was, when this was happening. And in the National Assembly, as a matter of fact, there's just no way he could, uh, he could uh, bring in someone at the expense of the speaker, Justin Muturi. Because Muturi and Kenyatta are an item. Then the DP did not end there. He then moved, he then moved to Senate. And at the Senate, that's where the deputy president is now controlling everything. In Jubilee Party, he the, the speaker is his guy, the majority leader is his guy, 
the minority whip is this guy the majority whip is this guy uhuru kenyatta zero but will the deputy president swallow the bait to stage a contest with president uhuru mugai kenyatta in central kenya will he swallow that bait because i'm sure and convinced that's that's what the president wants to do the president wants to prove whether the deputy president is indeed controlling national assembly so today i want us to look at the move by the president to set up a contest with his deputy in parliament and if you are bumping on this video for the first time i want you to just do small thing i want you to just take 2 seconds and hit the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this you get notified i'm waiting for you to do that now back to the main issue can the deputy president william ruto stage a contest with his boss in the national assembly the fact of the matter is that the two nominees Betty Maina and Mutahi Kagwe will have to go through a vetting process and the national assembly will have to approve those names and the president i'm sure is well aware that he can still win the, that parliament can still vote for those people without the support of the dp and how is that possible he will use the odia members of parliament through raila molodinga he will then go and involve the wiper party because he nominated wavinya ndeti then from there he will go ahead and talk to mudavadi or convince a few members of the Amani National Congress and of course can members of parliament will vote for, for for them or with them and that gives him a head start but it's not one the, what the deputy what the president wants is a contest in jubilee party and why is he keen on that contest that's the question which we must look at and we must answer in my view the deputy pres uh, in my view the president is keen on this contest because he wants to test the following number one, he wants to test the strength of the deputy president william samoy ruto in parliament is william samoy ruto really controlling parliament forget about parliament is william samoy ruto controlling members of parliament from jubilee side that's one thing the president wants to know the moment he will know that the dp controls parliament then he will understand how he will operate and that explains why the deputy president never bothered to invite that explains why the president never bothered to invite his deputy to mombasa despite the deputy traveling to mombasa remember this cabinet for for the president to prepare a cabinet it's not just something he can wake up one day and prepare it is a process the nis has to go through the names names has to be provided you know but he didn't involve his deputy remember jubilee party was a coalition initially then they merged then after merging still there's the belief that the tna members of parliament or mps who would have been elected under tna parliament under tna party are still the majority in jubilee and your mp side are the minority so the president want to test whether this man has the strength in parliament that's number one 
Number two, why the president is setting this contest is that the president wants to identify Jubilee members of parliament, especially those ones from central Kenya, who can go ahead and defy him. The president wants to know them. So that once he, once he identifies them, then he can now start dealing with them, maybe through the system or through charm offensive. But from where I am, I think the president is very keen on identifying the members of parliament from central Kenya, specifically, who can choose to vote for the DP if the DP will choose to oppose the list at the expense of voting for the president. Now that's called real politics with the K. So he's going to test that. And lastly, lastly, the president wants to see whether he can rule this country or he can govern this country without the support of his deputy, William Samairuto. And that's why he wants this contest. Because if he will be able, if the president will be able to, to pass this list through parliament without the support of the DP, assuming the DP will swallow the bait and oppose this list, if he will be able to pass it, then it will mean that the president can as well pass any motion in parliament without the deputy president. It will also mean that the president can as well pass any bill in parliament without the DP. So I strongly believe that the president wants to test whether he can govern without the DP. And if this vetting, if this case will be vetted and passed in parliament without the support of the DP, then I'm sure the president is going to even be more ruthless on his deputy moving forward. I don't know what you think, but something tells me, and I want to believe so, that President Uhuru Mge Kenyatta is strategically setting up a contest pitting him and his deputy William Samuel Ruto in parliament. And I want to ask you a simple question. Do you think parliament can fail to pass the nominees presented by President Ru Kenyatta? Is it possible? I want to get your answer on that. And if you are bumping on this video for the first time, just like I said earlier, I want you to take just a minute. A minute is just too much. And hit the subscribe button. And in my next video, I want to discuss the details of the cabinet reshuffle. I want to take pick a few individuals from that cabinet and what their appointments mean. And at the same time, I have two or three guys already working on a video which I'm going to share here as part of that our weekly segment which I said we are going to start on this project program. Thank you guys and may you have a good day.